Hello, everybody. Episode of review time. Uh, I did actually make a little bit of a bet on Twitter, and I said, hey, uh, if Randero is going up against Lane, no way is not going to uh, not get his Ragnarok broken. Uh, relax. They're battling next episode. I'm just saying that right off the bat, because that's not even like, I would consider that a spoiler. You're just saying, okay, yeah, they're not battling this one, they're battling the next one. Like, they literally just like did, did this where they're like, oh yeah, okay, this. How do I watch these episodes? I watch it through a VPN. If you're wondering what a VPN is, go search it, go figure it out. I'm sure the comments will be lovely and helping out people. If you're wondering what channel I watch it on, on YouTube, the Koro Koro YouTube channel, C-O-R-O-C-O-R-O. -O -O. Search it, watch it through a VPN. That is the legal way to support it. Please do that. That's why these episode reviews do have limited screenshots, so that way I'm not showing the entire episode, obviously. This is review, it is transformative, let's begin. So, this is literally just continuing where we left off with uh, the twins uh, wanting the battle with Drum. A uh, little bit of a goofy segment where they're just uh, at the little restaurant of their parents and, uh, you know, cute little moment. It's, it's, it's nice, you know, it's nice. I do also like the pairing of Drum and the twins. Specifically Drum and Huga, just like, sort of like that dynamic of where Drum's very, I guess like, you know, very hyper and so is, uh, no, no pun intended, no pun intended, and so is uh, Huga. It's a fun little thing. So it's really funny, it's like, alright, so let's do the battle now. And they're like, hey, which one are you going to pick? You, uh, I'm going to battle you. And he's happy. So this is Huga's chance to shine. Uh, Obviously, it's going to be kind of like a spoiler thing, although it doesn't really matter, but they seem to do this for whatever the reason is. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it in a second. So, when Hugo's looking into Drum, he's looking into Lane. So, I need to explain why. So, it seems similar to Free. Drum, uh, drum like a strong blader with strong resonance, makes them think about Lane, because Lane is just sort of like this. Lean is like this uh, sort of powerhouse. I guess I don't want. Lean is like this powerhouse. So remember how Free was kind of seeing uh, Lean in the twins? It's similar to now how Hugo is seeing Drum, and he's also seeing kind of a bit of Lean. I guess because Lean is just strong, so strong later, they relate to him. Well, it's kind of a little bit funny that the guy beats you so bad that you you, you see him in every, you see him in all the fighters. Uh, obviously, really cool moment. This is to build up Huga because I believe Huga needs to still get in the festival. Uh, I believe something's gonna happen next episode, which is probably gonna guarantee him in it. Although he does do something that's a little surprising, but you know, I guess not an official match. So launches his base. He's like, Drum is like, oh, dragon. So they're both clashing, and Drum has three moves now. What is it? It's Double check. It is bound wing. We get a double bound. And isn't it like Tempest Breaker? I'm pretty sure those are the three. So bound, so first of all, Tempest, from what I'm able to see from this episode, they get a clear understanding. Because Tempest goes from not to it is awakened to pushed. I'm pretty sure it just resets. So every battle it resets. So like the Chosy Awakening, it resets. I think what they meant in the description is that after, at the end of the, like, as you get the dragon fully awakened in the battle, it's not going to go back. But obviously after the battle, you reset it and it goes back, I guess. So, so it's a weird way of putting this. It's like Imperial and kind of like the Cho Chosy Awakening where it's not perp. So like the Chosy Awakenings aren't permanent and it's, so you, see, you see how confusing it is? It, it just, just, it's not permanent because it's not. He does bound wing, throws it up. Hugo does a little power up with Hyperion. They're both charging at each other. First of all, they're going around the stadium. Uh, really cool animation shot. So you see Hugo charging at him, and then after you see Drum, or I guess Dante, also charging at him, and you see both their avatars. It's really cool, and Hyperion's going all out, and man manages to, to burst Tem Tempest Dragon. Oh, okay. Now, I'm kind of like iffy on this because it's like, Drum wasn't really like, 
he wasn't as strong as Iga or Volt. Like he had, I would say, like I think out of like the three pro tags of Volt, Iga, and Drum, I think Drum lost the most. So I'm not really like that surprised to be honest. Like this isn't like if Hyperion did a burst on Brady Bell, because then I'd be like, <laughs> hello. This is like just like all right, because what happens is he's pushing the wing, but I guess he's able to actually push Dragon back so far that uh, it's a burst, maybe a, maybe a hint towards Tempest's weakness. He's very happy. Uh, we then after see Harry. That's what I'm talking about. 10 out of 10 episode right there. No. Uh, Ranger is approaching him, wants to challenge him. You get these really cool shots of Harry. This is my favorite one. <laughs> of Harry, because he just looks so derpy. He's like, yeah, he's not going to win. He's challenging us. This is not going to go well for him. Uh, poor Ranger. I don't know why Ranger is doing this to prove himself, I guess. Maybe because he feels like a weakling. No, no, no. The Ranjiro fans are gonna go after me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think he's okay. Oh, and then after, by the way, Dragon bodies Hyperion like so many times. So clearly, uh, whatever he did is not gonna work. Cause after that, he pushes Dragon to its ultimate awakening. So there's balance mode. Then after the ultimate awakening, the Dragon then after does Tempest Breaker and basically <laughs> beats up Hyperion with ease. Drum is happy. So is Hyuga. And now to go over to next week. Uh, it's where we actually get Ranjiro versus Lean, and you can see that he actually does throw around the barrier with his hurricane thing. And unfortunately, this is where we're going to end it off talking about this. So you're going to notice that he's being really pushed on the wall. So what it's going to lead me to believe is this is what they're going to do. It's going to be the same like fine free. They're going to build it up like they can do it, and then after that. What I think is going to happen is at the end of it, uh, of, at the end of their match, it's going to keep on hitting it through the barrier and eventually Ragnarok is going to break. Now the thing is this, Lean beating Renjiro is something I could care less about. Not like, oh, it, it's the episode's going to suck. What I mean is like, in terms of power, like if he can beat three with first year in it, then after Evolve the Bait to Lucifer, beat Louie, what chance does Ranjiro have? Like, I would say logically, even though power scaling Beyblade Burst does not really work too well, because it's just whatever the new release is strongest. Uh, actually, not in this case with Tempest Dragon, so I guess fair play. But, uh, you know, if he can beat Louie, I don't know what chance Ranjiro has. So I, I think it's sad enough to say, lads, I don't think he's going to make it. It'll be very sad. Uh, but I am going to probably, I did do this joke where I was like, hey, you know, if uh, Ragnarok's gonna go up, go down against it, it'd be funny if I just did that whole meme and said, oh my god, Lucifer broke Ragnarok. So whenever that video comes out, stay tuned. It's gonna be a really fun one. Uh, that's where we're gonna be ending off this video though. Do you think Ranjiro is gonna survive? Uh, stay tuned for my RIP Ragnarok video because I'm doing that regardless. I already got it recorded and I already got the editing done for that, so I guess stay tuned. It'll be a funny little thing. I think overall for this episode, my thoughts on it are simply, it's a good episode to showcase sort of like drum and dragon and you get this really nice dynamic with the, the twins and drum, so I'm okay with it. I think that's where we're gonna be ending off this video, so I do wanna say, Thank you all for watching. Uh, really, So I was in the middle of editing my video of the review and then I saw this, so I'm just gonna combine this with the review. So on the latest Sakuratami video, uh, they actually show off the new, so this stadium's gonna actually be, I believe it should be coming out in November. I think it's supposed to be in some battle set or whatever. Uh, there's a whole thing with the releases and whatever. I'm not covering in specific, but uh, the stadium, like, I can talk about at least the stadium. The stadium's gonna be in a set that's gonna come out later. Uh, this is a lot bigger of it. So this is a new stadium. It is a new stadium. And if you notice, it's a lot bigger. I'm not too sure how the pockets things work. I don't even think there's pockets there. It's a lot bulkier, and to be honest, I'm all for it. Uh, 
I like how this looks and I'm just happy we're getting a new stadium because I'm going to be honest, I am sick and tired of every single year of burst that we've been dealing with this where there has not been a new stadium. Uh, finally there is and it kind of looks like one of those beaches around it. Looks interesting. It's kind of, it kind of looks like a, the standard stadium but a little bit modified and just bigger. I'm not too sure. Maybe you let me know your thoughts. I got some other screenshots of it where it kind of looks like it just pockets it out. I think this is perfect uh, for Super King Bays. This is a really good job by TT. Really smart. Look, they make a stadium now to finally fit the base. I've been whining on this for the longest time. Like, and even people in the comments, because the thing is this. Okay, I have to use the standard Burst Stadium for videos because it's the standard Burst Stadium. The only difference is I just have a little bit of a skin on it. But, you know, people are like, oh, the stadium's too small for those bays. Okay, so then after, I use the bigger stadium, like the actual bigger, bigger one. No, it's too big for the bays. Now we literally get the thing that is catered towards Super King Bay, so that's going to be good. That's going to be good. I really cannot wait to try this out. I feel like I want to do like a whole, when, when this eventually does come out and this drops uh, a couple months, it's far away, so trust me when I say that. It's far, we got a long way to go. But uh, I, I'm excited for this, God. There is also a particular thing, but I'll, I'm waiting to see what else gets confirmed. I, I do wonder what else is going to be with uh, the set with the stadium that is officially confirmed. Uh, new stadium though looks amazing. I can't wait to even get that skin too. Anyways, all right. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode review. Uh, enjoy the meme video. I'm probably going to get out of the Randy Roberts thing. And thanks for watching.